Welcome to Beyond the Mind and the next evolution of coaching and counseling. Because that's where we're going to go today, is the next evolution. But it's not just the next evolution of coaching and counseling. Where we're going to go is actually the next evolution for humanity, for every area of life. Does anyone remember the days when the internet first kind of was switched on? Back in the 90s, you remember that? You know, and some people really resisted it. It's like, oh no, this is just a fad, right? And there were certain industries that embraced it straight away, and there were other industries that kind of took their time with it. But in the end, the internet affected every industry. It catapulted every industry to the next phase. Well, what we're going to be sharing with everyone today, UI, or universal intelligence, is very akin to the internet. And it's going to take not only the counselors, the healers, and the coaches to the next level, and it will do that in a profound way, but it's going to take all of us to the next level. No matter what we're doing, no matter what we're doing as a career, whether we're a mum and dad, a school teacher, a coach, a counselor, the president of the United States, no matter who it is that we are, as soon as we embrace UI, we're going to go to the next level. So before I share a little bit more about that, any coaches or counsellors here today? A couple, a few, yeah? Do you guys want to share what had you want to come today? Why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? Um, coaches and counsellors, why are you here? I think someone's asking for more volume, is that right? Yes. Great, could we have a little bit more volume? Um, I found out about this through a friend of mine who participates in UI, and I thought I would enhance my practice on the therapist. Wonderful. Practice. And a which, sorry? A uh, national freedom. Team. Oh, right, okay, yep, 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 team, yep, team, got it. Beautiful, welcome. Yes, absolutely. The beauty about UI is not only will it take your career to another level, it's not just, you know, you go to university, when I did uni, I got a marketing degree. Marketing doesn't really apply to my parenting skills, you know, or my fitness ability. UI transforms every area, brings every area up. It's kind of the one ability that brings every other area of life into balance. So, wonderful to have you here. Anyone else want to share what brought them here? Coaches, counselors? But UI brought one area of mine tremendously up. <laughs> <laughs> it did indeed, Nazir. <laughs> and all the women in your life are very grateful for that. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Yes? A friend of mine introduced me to Lisa. Uh, we had a phone session, and um, wow, she was, I've had a lot of help, but um, that was the best I've uh, experienced for a long time to build up my self esteem. Great. Yes, that's the key. Self-belief, self-esteem. If only we were all raised with it. Yeah. We'll talk more about how important that is soon. At the back. Um, yes, um, whether I'm coaching or counseling, every now and then when I'm in the process with a student or client, there's a stream of consciousness that comes through, and when it does, it's right on, and it's very exciting. Yes. And that's when I'm most fulfilled. Yes. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, um, I'm a spiritual counselor and minister, and I'm also an empath. And I'm here because I still need to trust the voice more. Don't we all? Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Well, let's hold that as an intention for you. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin, great. Wonderful to have you here. Yes. Um, when we met you six months ago, uh, was it six months already? Yeah, oh, was, yeah, December. Yeah. Well, more than that. We were going around in the circle, and I uh, knew I had these healing abilities, but I wasn't quite sure how to do it, or that I really wanted to do it because I had a lot of fear. But we started doing. I started doing the meditation that you teach with yep. the self belief, and it has just opened up things for me. I have clients now, and I am more confident than I ever have been. You know, we, we got the email from Toddy, and it's like, we're going up there. So that's why we're oh, here. Oh, guys, it's great to have yeah. you. 
Beautiful. And that's a very common you know, response to the UI work that we do. So before I go into it, I just I have a request of everyone. All right? My request is as follows. It's a very simple request. Is to rather than believe what I say, because I'm not asking you to. You don't need to believe a single word I say. What I'm asking today is just to listen for the truth. Or feel for the truth might be more accurate. You know, there are a lot of people out there in the world with something to say. And people can be very powerful and very persuasive. But we're moving into a phase of our evolution, which is something UI is fast tracking, where the more we feel into the truth, the more our lives are going to flourish. And you're going to see that there's a very distinct resonance when somebody's in truth to when somebody's just yapping away straight out of their intellect. It's a very distinct resonance. So that's what I'm going to ask today is not to take anything that I'm saying as gospel because you know in 10 years time we're going to discover there's a whole bigger picture and then again we're going to go even bigger. Just as we think we've got it nailed, the rug comes out from underneath our feet and says, you were close. That's what my son's going to do. He's now five. By the time he's 10, he's just going to look at me and go, nice shot, Dad, but um, it's like this. <laughs> yep. But what we have to offer is based on where we're at now to take everyone to that next phase. And then he'll come along and then take us all to the next phase. And then his sister will do the same again for him and his kids and so on. That's how it goes. So is everyone okay with that? Just to listen for the truth. Yeah? Now, if you experience a reaction in your body to what I'm saying, you want to know what I mean? You know, have reactions during the day. You have these little explosions going off. The kids come running in and wake you first thing in the morning. Or husband said this about what you're wearing. Is that what you're wearing? And there's this huge reaction. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. If you experience that, I'm going to ask a question. To you, is that the truth or is that a non-truth? You're wondering now, aren't you? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I thought that was the truth. I just want to give you some perspective. The reactions in your body have more to do with your identity being stretched. So every time you bump into who you think you are and who you swear you are and who you swear this reality to be, boom. Is an explosion. The identity wants to go, no, 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 don't see yourself as bigger, see yourself as smaller, otherwise we're very uncomfortable. <laughs> so the reactions are an opportunity for expansion. So if you find I'm causing these reactions or the reactions are occurring in the space of me talking, just stick through it. They're trying to hold you back. And we're just going to keep moving through that, okay? Beautiful. Is everyone good with that? Wonderful. So we're listening and just trying to feel the truth. And my commitment is to, I will allow as much truth in as I can in the time that we're together. So the next evolution in coaching and counselling, the next evolution for humanity. Let's come back to this internet metaphor we were talking about earlier. For a long time, we were seeing a computer as finite to its hard drive, correct? Before the internet, that's what it was, or it could be networked to, a, to the company. And concurrently, we've been seeing that the human brain was like that hard drive, stand alone. Whatever you knew, whatever you know in your brain, plus anything you learn and any permutations of that was the sum total of your intelligence. But then the internet came along and took the standalone hard drive and made it infinite. Correct? Took it to geometric levels. Whatever was in the internet, the computer could now access. It's pretty profound. Well, UI is to your brain what the internet is to computers. You know, we get so excited about technology, the new iPhone. And granted, they are very stylish. And we do like them. We get very excited about all these technology technological breakthroughs, but the most advanced science, the most advanced technology in terms of Wi-Fi, everyone knows what Wi-Fi is, wireless internet, is in here. 
the most advanced Wi-Fi network in the universe is in you. You are Wi-Fi enabled. Now, what's he talking about? Some of you know, some of you are still wondering. Who's had the experience of thinking of a friend and all of a sudden, oh, there they are, they're calling me. I was just thinking about you. Everyone. I ask that in every single event we do. Everyone says yes. It's not a rare experience. It's common. But we dismiss it. Ah, oh, that's nothing. No, it's profound. The fact that everyone's having it, it is profound. We need to follow those breadcrumbs and see where that leads us which is what we're going to do today. The experience of walking into a space like this or a sports stadium. Anyone walked into a sports stadium, a Dodgers game or whatever? It's the only baseball team I know. Um, <laughs> there's no baseball in Australia. And you can feel, you, immediately you're uplifted, correct? Yes. Unless your team's losing, then you're... <laughs> right? There's an energy. But how is that possible? How come we are able to be affected by the environment? How come somebody is thinking, holding an intention to call us and we can pick up on that? It's because this is an antenna. Yeah? What we have inside here is an antenna. How many times, and many of you have read all the spiritual books there are to read, have you heard stillness, quiet in the mind. Have you heard that? Yeah. Even if you're not spiritual, you've heard that. Yoga classes, you take yoga, you would have heard that. So what's the correlation between a quiet mind and this antenna brain? Well, they go hand in hand. It's only in the quiet mind where you can perceive what's coming in through the antenna. So which is why we have the experience we wake up at 3 a.m. and bang, there's that moment of genius solving our problem. Because we were quiet. We were at rest. Or you have that inspiration when you're sitting on the toilet. Yep. You want to have that? Yeah. Or in the shower. Because you're not running around like a headless chook. Your mind is quiet enough that it can perceive frequencies that are normally imperceptible. Frequencies, let's talk about that for a second because it's key to everything we're going to be doing today. We live in a universe made of infinite frequencies. We're aware of mobile phone frequencies, we're aware of internet frequencies. And you can see the internet frequencies, mobile phone frequencies, they carry information, correct? We can let that in, that's quite palatable. So that your device, your computer, your laptop perceives the frequency, translates that into information, and voila, you have the internet, you have Google on your computer. Well, this device here, this entire device, not just this one, but this entire organism here, is that little Wi-Fi modem. And it perceives frequencies and interprets them as feelings, as messages, as colours, as pictures, as information aiding us in our survival and also in our prosperity. Most of us have gone, no, that's not real. Because all I can hear is this loud mind, blah, 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 telling me I'm a failure and the only way to get anywhere in life is to thrive, you know, strive and do more and work harder and spend less time with the kids and do all these crazy things. So we put that aside because it's the quieter frequency. We're used to loud frequencies just drive up and down the country, see all these billboard advertising and TV. It's loud. Everything's loud. So that's what we've become conditioned to listening to. So the frequency, does anyone know, like if this mobile phone is picking up that cell frequency, what could this be picking up? What frequency? Thought. We've become, or we've started to believe at some point in history, that thought resides only within this organism. Is that correct? Anyone believe that? Who believes thought is only within you? you it's okay. Come on. This is why you're here, because I'm going to show that's not the case. <laughs> We're going to expand your viewpoint. Thought exists irrespective of the human being. We're just one organism that perceives thought. We're designed to perceive thought. Thought is the currency of our universe. Thought.
thought, then physicality. Thought preceded creation. We have an idea, then something is created. Now, if you're trying to understand how that all works, look at the human body, right? This living organism. We have a physicality, yeah, or apparent physicality, and we have non-physicality, which is thought. Thought isn't tangible, it's not physical. But thought is integrated throughout your entire anatomy, correct? If you wanted to put your awareness on your big toe to feel what that feels like, especially when you stub it, you know you have thought there, you have awareness. So thought is, thought permeates, awareness permeates our entire body. And if we want to move something or create something, I want to lift my arm, kick my foot, run, it begins with what? Thought. Everything begins with the thought. So what we're seeing in this physical reality came second. Thought happened, then physical reality came next. We've become so anchored in the physical reality that we're seeing things backwards. We go, no, physical's here, physical's what's real. It's actually not. Thought is what's real. Physical's the illusion. But you don't have to ponder that one right now. That's a deep one. So this physical body has been made in direct reflection of the universe that we exist in. It's an intelligence system that reflects thought. Illness is the symptom of thoughts in the body. The body is reflecting an ill thought. The body isn't ill, just the mind. The body reflects what's in the mind. Your success in life is reflecting what's in the mind. Your financial situation, your relationships, your kids are a reflection of the inner reality being mirrored externally. So the universe, if you can look at it like us, imagine wrapping an enormous brain around our entire physical universe. That's what we're dealing with. We are inside consciousness. There's consciousness within us. We are a manifestation of a larger consciousness, as is a dog, as is the trees. All of nature is a manifestation of consciousness. So we are just one extension of that. One idea, consciousness, which is like an intelligence, a self-aware intelligence, has an idea. My idea is to mirror myself on Earth. There, that's you. You are the mirrored version of the whole universe's consciousness in this physical parcel. That's pretty significant. Now, it's hard to let that in because since we were very young, we were told the opposite, weren't we? Well, let me just check. I don't want to presume. Who was told that they are the sum total of the intelligence of the universe in primary school? <laughs> no? I wish I was. It would have made a pretty big difference. Yeah? We would have made very different decisions. You know, when we see ourselves as the sum total of the universe versus when we see ourselves as a nobody, a whole different set of decisions come from those spaces, right? Anyone ever had a really crappy car when you're at college? You really you knew it was crap and you treated it like crap. Yeah? Is it just me? No one puts their hands up. Did you all drive BMWs when you were at home? <laughs> Am I in Beverly Hills? You had a BM BMW, Eddie, is that what you're saying? No. Have a crappy car and what do you do in it? You eat in it, you drink in it, but the minute you get something a little bit more swish, with leather seats, you stop eating, you stop treating it like crap. Well, that's the same thing with us. We make the decisions based on who we see ourselves to be. So to see ourselves as the entire universe, wow, that creates a whole different life trajectory than to see ourselves as that little rotten old car that doesn't deserve much. So if this exists, this consciousness, and if the brain is this antenna to infinite intelligence, then what's been stopping us from accessing it? So I want to talk a little bit about that. But before I do, does anyone have any questions so far on what I've said? Whose buttons am I pushing? No, here I'm going. I haven't pushed too many yet. 
It's quite fun. Oh, I'm pushing your button, Kevin. Actually, you're, you're not. I know. But, but but what I'd like to say is I've never the 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 example of the wireless modem I think is brilliant because it's it's hard to explain consciousness to people and to talk about uh, connecting. Mm -hmm. But at this point, at least in Los Angeles, everybody knows what a wireless modem is. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So this antenna on our brain is able to perceive frequencies. Right. Here's another great example for some of you. Who's ever, who's got a friend that always wants to catch up and you just leave having caught up with him feeling awful. <laughs> like, oh my God, what did you do to me? Yeah. yeah. You know why, you know why that happens? Because their energy, who they are and what they think of you is impacting your physical body. Their energy is coming into your body. Now what's very interesting about the physical body that no many, not many people kind of bring awareness to, this is thought responsive. This matter, this tissue, responds to thoughts. Otherwise I couldn't do this. Yeah? If I want to move something, I have a thought. It's completely controlled by intention thoughts. That's the frequency the body works by. It's a perfect vehicle. It won't be too long before cars are controlled by that as well. A little bit more technological advancements there. Thought is a frequency. This body responds. What happens to your body when you have happy thoughts? Happy body. What happens to your body when you have self-hating thoughts? Very unhappy body. What happens to your body if you have sexual thoughts? Hey, oh. that's, that's that. <laughs> You're okay. We know what happens to your body. Yeah. Well, the, how to get a rise out of this year, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so the body is responding. You know happy thoughts, positive thoughts, high frequency thoughts resonate on a beautiful level. Have you feel good? What's the most powerful thought you can ever have? Do you think, for yourself. Not there's a right answer, but what, what's the most powerful thought you can have for yourself? Love for yourself. Love for yourself. Yeah, how, much, how good do you feel when you have that fleeting moment, for many of us, of self-love ah, is so healing isn't it and what about those thoughts when you've just been told off and you've realized you've done something really dumb and that aside on top of that you slam yourself you idiot you stupid why do you keep screwing up I knew you were an idiot I knew you were a fraud I knew you were a failure anyone do that to themselves no. yeah you can't lie I know you all do <laughs> how does that have you feel the body just goes <laughs> And you know what I notice when that happens to me, my immune system just goes dead. I start getting sick immediately. I have a very sensitive system to frequencies. The body is responding to self-love and self-hate, which is healthier, self-love. So self-love is a very important concept because it directly relates to accessing universal intelligence. Here's another interesting concept for you. The universe is this enormous brain, as I shared, but it's not full of just happy thoughts. There's a balance. We live in a balanced universe, hot and cold, light and dark. Everything has a polar opposite. Have anyone noticed that? There's always an extreme, one end to the other. Color frequencies, infrared, ultraviolet, different frequencies. Sound waves, different frequencies. That's how the universe was conceived the only way this universe can be created is if there's a whole spectrum, and a spectrum in every possible direction, not just three-dimensional, dimensionally. So likewise, as there is this universal intelligence that can bring us insights and wisdom, there is also its opposite. Self-love, self-hate. It's very important. What's been happening is because we've started to believe that we're not good enough, that we're not deserving, we're not worthy, success doesn't runs in this family, arthritis runs in this family, divorce runs in this family, we're a nobody unless we have money, so on and so forth, collection of belief systems. Because we've been led to believe that about ourselves, that has set up what I'd like to call an identity. An identity being a, an, an amalgamation of all these different ideas about yourself. So from the time you were very young, uh, I'll share a nice intimate example, I always pushes somebody's buttons. 
more, mine more than anyone else's, is when I was young, because I was brought up into a Jewish family, at eight days old, there was a little operation that happened. <laughs> now, as a child, we're brought into this reality and we're like, well, I've forgotten who I really am because no one's reminding me. No one's come in and said, you're the sum total of the intelligence in the universe. No one's told me that because I'm listening for some kind of truth. I'm going to take it from my environment. It's a reference, looking for reference points. So my reference point at eight days old is, what the hell, man? What's wrong with you? But I don't say what's wrong with you. I say what's wrong with me. Why would you cut something off me? There must be something wrong with me. So by eight days old, I have now created this, what we call a thought form. It's like a ball of energy. And I've just gone pop, into my field, my consciousness. This nice little ball, it's a little bit dark, not very light. And this ball said, there's something wrong with me. Then a few days later, the doctor picks me up to check how I'm going as a three month old baby. And he looks at his chart and he looks at me and he looks at his chart, looks at me and says, oh, he's a little bit, he's off the chart. He's not quite pairing to the benchmark, to the norm. My mother gets concerned. As a three month old baby, I'm sensitive to energy. I'm sensitive to people's thoughts. I can feel what they think. Like you can now, right? We shared that, you have that feeling. You look at your sensitivity to it, imagine what a child's is. It's like amplified, they can feel everything, they're completely telepathic, completely, until it gets dumbed out of them. So in that space I'm feeling, uh oh, she's worried, he's worried, uh oh, I'm different. I'm not quite right. So by three months I've got, there's something wrong with me, and I've got, I'm different. Now there's another experience I didn't share that happened to me. The minute I was born, the doctor took me out and weighed me. So I've been in a womb for almost nine months, warm and cozy, somewhat feeling loved. I wouldn't go over the top there. I wasn't completely loved. There was a lot of resentment in that little cubby house of mine. And he takes me away. All of a sudden, I'm over there. My mother's over here. What do I feel? Separated. Separated. I'm all alone. I'm all alone, I'm different, and there's something wrong with me. With three months, I have an identity based on these fundamental non-truths. Non-truths. To me, they're my truth. But they weren't true, were they? Every single one of them. I wasn't alone, my mother was just there. There wasn't something wrong with me. If anything, it was the person behind the knife. Nothing wrong with me, right? And... I wasn't different in the way that I felt it. I was just not part of a chart. It didn't make me lesser than non-truths. So I've created an identity not based in truth, but based in non-truth. I carry that identity forward until the point that I see something magical. Truth. Until I see the real truth about myself, I am believing a non-truth. And by carrying those non-truths, I'm different, I'm not okay, all these things, many things happen to me. Number one, it is mirrored in my physiology. Because my cells, everything about my physical body has been designed to reflect the thoughts I hold about myself. The more enlightening or empowering thoughts, the more stronger, healthier my body is. The more self-hating, self-doubting thoughts, the more my body deteriorates. So not only am I becoming, um, having a lower immune system, but I'm also bringing in the experiences that match that identity. I'm having encounters with women at a very young age that are, oh, you're weird. I don't want to spend any time with you. And I will keep only talking to that kind of woman. I'll keep only putting myself in experiences that validate I'm not enough. There's something wrong with me. So this identity, excuse me, this identity is making decisions for me. It's making my career decisions because I can only go into a career that fits through that cookie cutter. Do you understand what I mean by cookie cutter? The identity is a cookie cutter. It can only cut out 
life experience that is a mirror of that. So it starts making decisions what job I will go for. Only the jobs that validate there's something wrong with me. Jobs that I will fail in so I can get there's something wrong with me. It will only bring in relationships that validate that. By that point in time, looking at my parents, wait a minute, You're, you two aren't happy. Oh, hmm. relationships make you unhappy. Plop, bang. That's another one. Can't trust women, bang. Women take away all your fun, bang. <laughs> These are real, I'm now Sonia. She had to deal with them all. So by the time I'm like 25, I'm riddled with all these thought forms of non-truth. But nobody told me otherwise. So to me, they are what? Truth. That's the truth. I don't have any other reference point. So all I can conclude is it must be the truth. I'm clumsy. Whenever I wear a white shirt, I'm going to mess it up. That was definitely a belief system. Anyone got that? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. I don't wear this shirt in here today. I wear something else. I'm going to mess it up, whatever I'm wearing, right? So this identity is shaping not only our physical well-being. You know, people go, oh, I've got a metabolism issue. I've got a thyroid issue. I've got a this issue. You've got a non-truth issue is what you've got. Too many of them. So they stay there until a truth is revealed. Life, as you would have experienced, is constantly trying to show you a larger truth about yourself. You have a failing, repeat pattern over and over again until you get it and you see yourself in a bigger light. So you can push through the non-truths. There's a lot of unnecessary learning experiences we can go through. And sometimes they're necessary. Depends how stubborn we are. So you, I is an access to truth. The identity is all these non-truths. We are covered, imagine this bubble that is filtering out the light. The light is universal intelligence. So there are times, like we said, when you're meditating or you're still or you're being self-loving, where the insights are coming in. Yeah, who meditates here? Anyone meditate? You're wanting to go beyond the mind, the self-doubt, the identity. That's the point. Because it's out of that space where the truth exists. When we make decisions from the mind, from this identity, we're capping, completely capping, what's possible. Financially capping. If I just said to you, the rich can't be trusted... They don't feel that within themselves. You can't trust rich people. There's a few of you. You know what that belief does? Many of you have it, even though you're not putting your hand up. It means the minute you get money in your pocket, you're going to find a way to spend it. Because you don't want to be seen as untrustworthy. So all these beliefs that we've held on to are creating a financial reality, not necessarily a desirable one. We'll share a little bit more, we'll do some demonstrations and I'll show you what beliefs are underpinning your reality. So all these beliefs are filtering out the light, filtering out truth, universal intelligence. So our role as human beings, and this process is known as enlightenment, is to see the truth. It's really all enlightenment means. You've seen the truth. You've moved beyond this false reality and you are now seeing the truth about who you really are. So as we start seeing the truth, show me the truth about when I was eight days old, show me the truth about not about being different, show me the truth about women can't be trusted. As we start seeing the truth, that subconscious mind that's filled with all these non-truths dissolves. And as that dissolves, all this light starts coming in. And the more light you have coming in, you become enlightened. Right? That's what it is. You are enlightened. You are of the light. And light has all the answers. Universal intelligence is pure light, pure love. So the magic we shared before 
in a space of self-doubt, there's no you I. There's only more doubt, more anger, more upset. Because something magical about frequencies, if you know much about the physics of frequencies, resonance. Anyone familiar with the term resonance? If I play Carlos, you'll back me up on this one. Yeah, he's a composer. If I have two grand pianos and I play one key on this piano, the same key will resonate on this. He's nodding. He's my expert witness. It will play without being touched. Resonance. Likewise, if we're holding a space of self-doubt, which is where we go to from this mind-made ego, we only attract those thoughts. Not just those experiences, but those thoughts. It's a different frequency. But if when we move into a space of self-belief or self-love, we are now at a high frequency and we start attracting high frequency thoughts, high frequency ideas, high frequency solutions. The atomic bomb, high frequency, low frequency. Plastic bags, high frequency, low frequency. Combustion engine, high frequency, low frequency. High frequency ideas do amazing things. Not only do they heal your body and expand your consciousness, but they are harmonious to nature. Low frequency ideas show up as short term solutions will end up taking things away from you and destroying nature. Because remember I said in the universe there's a polarity. Hot and cold, we have high frequency ideas and low frequency ideas. The term ego, have any of you heard the term ego? Let me put that in simple terms. The ego means opposite. If you want ideas and thoughts and beliefs that empower you and heal you, you're up here with universal intelligence, your true self with self-love. When you drop that space because you're going into self-hate, self-doubt and all those things, this brain, this is a brain, there's two brains. Think of the universe as having two brains and all these spectrums in between. You're either accessing insight, inspiration, pure intelligence, or the opposite. This is where all the bad ideas come from. How many bad ideas do we see in the world? There's a great quote that I read once. It's amazing how much research has gone into the worst ideas in history. Isn't that an amazing idea, just that in itself? You spent years coming up with the worst idea. How did you do that? How did you not see that? It's because when we're in that I need to achieve, I'm not enough, I need to prove myself, I need everyone else's respect. When we're in that space, which many of us have been in, in our careers, we oscillate and bring in another brain, another intelligence, bad ideas that cause havoc, concrete, chainsaws, all these ideas that seem like a good idea at the time because that's the space. It's like, yeah, that is a good idea. I'm not going to tell you where that's going to lead you. That intelligence wants the opposite. So when we draw on that mind space, we're only creating things that are, un that are going to undo what we truly want. If you're wondering opposite, am I drawing in this opposite intelligence? Let me give you a few very tame examples. Which women in here have straight hair? Who's got straight hair? Straight hair. How many of you have wanted curly hair? Have wished you had curly hair? Women with curly hair. How many of you have wished you on straight hair? Where's Sonia? Where's she? She's got beautiful blonde straight hair or wants curly hair. That's the ego. It wants the opposite of what's perfect. How many times have you gone through life and you finally get given what you want and there's something wrong with it? No, I want it this way. No, I want that one. I've always loved blondes, but I've got a brunette. You know, <laughs> whatever. This is constant opposites going on in the system. You know the Looney Tune cartoons where you've got the devil and the saint? That's what's going on. There's two energies trying to compete for your awareness. Your conscious mind is going, oh, I don't know, oh, I don't know. That one's going to get me there faster, but that one's more enlightened. Ah. That's promising me the world, and this one's like promising you enlightenment, <laughs> happiness. But you, you know, you want a sports car. So, the more truth we allow into our life, the more that that little 
opposite can no longer cause havoc. So UI is an access to truth. It's an access to what you truly want. Now, before you start thinking that there's some intelligence trying to get into your head and program you, UI is you. You are it. You are a manifestation of universal intelligence. We might all look different, but we are all sharing one consciousness. We are all connected. So I am you, and you are me. It's very crazy when we go to war with each other. It's like, you're just killing yourself. What are you doing? <laughs> you're just hurting yourself. So UI is the real you. It's not an outside intelligence. It's an inside intelligence. Who you think you are is not who you are. You are UI. You are pure consciousness. So imagine you move, by the time you move all these identities, all these experiences that we've identified with, what's left? Think about it logically. If you get rid of, I'm not good at sports, I'm not good at maths, men can't be trusted, women can't be trusted, I've got this issue, I've got that issue. If you were to get rid of all those concepts, they're just concepts, right? What's left? Pure consciousness. Pure infinite intelligence. Pure potential. Does that make sense? That's what's left. You get rid of all the crap, and what's left is nothingness, everythingness, infinite. That's what's left. So, the role of UI or consciousness in, huma in humanity right now is to elevate people beyond their identity because it's the identity that's causing havoc in our own life. It's making all the decisions. It's the identity that's running businesses. It's the identity that's causing havoc in the environment. So consciousness is coming in, universal intelligence is coming in and saying, come on, see yourself as more. So, the space I'm holding for everyone here is I'm here to tell you how great you are. So any reactions you're having or adverse effects you're having from what I'm saying, the joke is you're arguing with me. You're going, don't tell me how great I am. I don't want to know it. It's funny, I get people arguing with me. It's like, okay, you're lost. If you, don't want to see, if you insist on seeing yourself as Clark Kent when you're really Superman, I can't help you. I'm trying to show you you're Superman. No, I don't want a bar of it. Okay. I see myself as Superman. So I get all of Superman's abilities. When you see yourself as Clark Kent, you only get what Clark Kent's got. So the bigger we see ourselves, i.e. the more truthful we see ourselves, the more of the universe's faculties we get to draw upon. Whether it's healing, whether it's insight, ideas, traveling in different levels of consciousness, whatever it is, whatever you can let in, that becomes available. You were made in the image of consciousness. Anyone brought up in a religious school or anything when you were young? A couple of you? You don't want to, you don't want to admit to it, most of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many times did they say you were made in the image of God? All the time. This is what's meant. You were made in the image of consciousness. What consciousness has available, which is all the frequencies of ideas and intelligence and all these different levels of thought, because they come from consciousness, that's in you. You were made in that image. The only thing that's getting in your way, if you don't believe it, is that you're holding, no, I'm not made in the image of that. I'm this little person. I'm only destined for this amount of success and this amount of love. Because the last person that tried to love me wanted to kill me at the same time. So I can't let in love. That's all non-truth. It's all non-truth. So, the capabilities of UI is what we've come to the USA to teach. We have a very opposite training program to most. You know, you go to workshops or you go to university and what they do is layer you with more things, more education, more knowledge, more books to read, but that's all coming from the space that you're not perfect and the sum total of the universe itself, isn't it? You're not enough. Well, we come from a different place at UI. We come from, you are the whole universe, so what kind of information do I have to offer you? 
That's redundant. My role is to remind you. So instead of layering you with new things, we just take them off you. You're not that, stop believing that. You're not that, stop believing that. We take that off. Because what's left is pure intelligence. You have access to the answers. If your brain is akin to Wi-Fi internet, then when you want an answer, it comes in. What are you gonna need to read a book for? Boom, 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 bring it in. Your computer's not reading books to learn what the internet knows. It accesses what it needs to know, correct? Now, what's going to be more effective in your life? Reading somebody else's truth or accessing your own truth? It's obvious, right? The great thing about UI is it's all about you. It's not just one size fits all because the universe is experiencing itself in countless different ways through a tree through a fish, through you, through humanity in all its permutations. So when you bring in universal intelligence, you're not bringing answers in that everyone else is getting, you're bringing in what's right for you because you are very unique. You have a certain set of belief systems, you have a certain level of evolution, how long you've been in existence for, and I'm not just talking about this lifetime, go beyond this lifetime, yes, you can go beyond this lifetime, you are bigger than that. UI is factoring in all these things. You guys are at a very high level of evolution. If you weren't, you couldn't be able to be in this space. And I couldn't be in your space. It would be very challenging. So you guys are at a very high, very ready state of evolution. When you bring in UI, it's going to keep raising you to the next level. Does anyone have any questions so far? A question? Yes. <clears throat> Maybe it's not the best question to ask, but why would we, like, in, in essence, using your metaphor of the Wi-Fi, put a lead shield around it so that we would limit our amount of frequencies that we could receive in through this thing called the mind, these programs, these things, and in many cases that have been provided to us without really our choice as we have grown up and developed. And different there things. are two answers depending on what stage you're asking the question from. The first stage is the question from, let's assume you don't know that you've got Wi-Fi. That's the first thing, you don't know. The majority of people out there have no idea they've got Wi-Fi. Right. They don't know where the switch is. So they're just like, well, I don't have that. It's not even part of my consciousness. So I, all I've got is to believe that I'm a nobody and I need to struggle and strive and better myself. The other reason is because if you do know you've got Wi-Fi and you still don't want to access it, very important question. Why would we not want to access it when, we knew, when we've got it available? If we knew we could be Superman, why would we still to be, choose to be Clark Kent? <clears throat> Very good question. I'm gonna, instead of answer, answering that intellectually, I'm just gonna tap into the people in the room and I'm gonna tell you why some of you are holding on to that, okay? First reason is it comes up, I will lose my family. If I become great beyond who my family sees me to be, I will be abandoned and ridiculed. Who can feel that? Some of you, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. that's one reason. Another reason that you guys come up with is, I'll be all alone, my husband won't want a bar of me. Who's worried they're gonna leave, their husband is gonna get left behind if they move forward in this kind of work? <laughs> yes, yes. We have reasons based in non-truth. These aren't real, because what ends up happening for most of you is the more enlightened you become, everyone starts going, they might first go, oh, she's a freak. But what they end up going is, she's a happy freak. Let's start dropping the freak, but she's happy. I'm unhappy. I want what she's got. By leading by example, holding that resonance, people start raising. There's this real misconception that if we stay small, it makes other people feel okay about themselves. Let me paint it a little bit differently to you. And people live by that. Oh, I can't do this work because my husband's going to feel inadequate. Oh, I can't do this work, my parents are going to leave. Blah, 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 blah. Let me paint it differently. Imagine this room was pitch black, right? And I am sitting here with my light on, being my truth. What happens? Exactly. You all can see. But if I go, oh, no, I'm just going to push their buttons by holding my resonance and I turn off my light, then what happens? 
you're all in the dark. So we have this, the ego gives you this misconception, you know, it's better to stay small around those who are intimidated. It's better for everyone. No, you are keeping yourself in the dark and you're keeping them in the dark. You're doing no one a favor. Yes, it might push their buttons, but what they're all seeking for is happiness. They're not gonna get it in a room that's pitch black. Turn on your light, radiate your light so everyone can see. So does that answer your question, Mark? We have reasons that we think are true, so we go, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch off from my greatness because I won't get this out of my life. You know, many things come to mind, like um, I had this woman that was almost going blind and she came to get some help, and we started showing her UI, and then she just bolted. The minute she clued on to that she was about to heal, she realized, but wait a minute, my blindness gets me all the love and attention that I currently get. Now for someone who was raised with no love and attention to get any semblance of attention is gold. It's not the truth because you're getting you know, mediocre attention. So she was holding onto that. So we have these investments in staying small. Let me remind everyone, if you didn't get it the first time, they're not the truth. What you think you're getting is a pittance compared to what's on offer. Yeah? You're wanting a little bit of love from somebody when what you can get is self-love. Much more powerful. Feels much better. And the interesting thing is, without self-love, you can't even feel somebody else's love. It ain't coming in. You just push it away. So, there you go. There's some answers there. Things to work through. Nazim. Uh, I didn't understand when you were eight days old and they cut you up. Did they cut too much or too little? <laughs> oh, you have to ask my wife. <laughs> 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 uh, no, it was that experience is as a child I was in the impact of the pain and the experience, the energy of the experience. I go into pain. I'm trying to understand what happened. And in that moment, I decided, you cut something off, there's something faulty about me. Do you remember that? My body, I don't remember it consciously, yeah? But physiologically, the emotion gets stored in the body. That's where the illness comes from, because the, 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 I, the conclusions go bang, bang, bang. They go to the part of the body that relates to that part of the, the frequency matches the part of the body. Does that make sense? So what you remember consciously has nothing to do with it because these things, your body is, is, is this hard drive of your identity. You've just stored, I had this experience, I was molested, I was snipped, I was let down, boom, 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 stored through your body. So what happened was, you're probably wondering, well, how did you know that, right? Well, in UI, we raise our consciousness to the point where we can go into the subconscious mind. So I was coming up against the feeling that, uh, let me give the specifics of it. It's hard to, once you clear something, it's very hard to remember it, which is a good thing. Uh, but it was along the lines of, why can't I make a difference? Why can't I impact something? And when I went into my body, which is what we teach you guys how to do in some of the later programs, my body said, well, that's because, snip. It showed me in that moment. It took me back there, not in a painful way, because UI it shows you what you can handle, but it took me into that memory. I was like, ah. Oh. And then about another 10 other beliefs came out of that experience too. So one of the big beliefs that I had to clear about a year ago was, I have no say about what happens to me in my life. Do you want to feel that? You have no say about what happens to you in your life? That experience, I, that's where that belief came from. I have got no say over my body. Clearly, I'm helpless. So out of that one single experience, and I'm, not, and I'm not saying this happens to every kid. I'm just sharing what happened to me. Out of that one experience came about 10 limiting beliefs. I've got no say over my body. I've got no say over, over how my life goes. And there's something wrong with me. I don't remember the rest. I've cleared them all. Yes? After thousands of years, the doctors have proven that there is no need to do that, to cut. Well, that's music to my ears, Nazir. <laughs> Bit late, but nonetheless, music to my ears. 
I'm getting the wind up and saying it's time to do some demonstrations. Can we hold on the questions? Is that okay? We'll, be, we'll have more time soon. What I would like to do now is demonstrate what becomes possible with UI. Now I said before we have these limiting beliefs that hold us back. But limiting beliefs don't show up in blood tests. You can't look at a blood test and go, oh yeah, he's got a limiting belief about not feeling you know, different. Or she's got a limiting belief that men can't be trusted. That doesn't show up in a blood test. What does show up in a blood test is the manifestation of the limiting belief, how it has affected the physiology. This is where you get all these medical terms. It's this disease, this disease, that syndrome, that syndrome. No, it's just a whole bunch of passed down non-truths that we've ingrained over generation, generation and lineage. So, those of you who are looking to take your counseling and coaching to the pinnacle, we're gonna do some demonstrations around that. Is anyone here who's wanting a new career, who's a bit bored with their career and it's not soulful, it's not truthful? Right, well I'm gonna be demonstrating that too. This is all part of universal intelligence. And those of you who are wanting to heighten and learn how to trust yourself as well. The first demonstration, I think I only have time for one, is I'd like to look at, oh, I'll open it up. If you're interested to know what is at the root cause of an illness or symptom in the body, if you're interested in what's capping your financial reality, what is keeping your financial reality small, I'm happy to do a demo on that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Happy to play any of those areas. But I want to let you know is after this, what you are going to get a one-on-one -on -one session with one of the mentors. And they're going to tap in for you as well. So what I can't cover, you'll get one-on-one -on -one anyway. Okay? So if, if we miss out, that's okay. Pamela, do you want to choose me somebody? Hey Pam, do you want to come up and point out for us? Now, you have to be open. You have to be open. If you are going to be closed and you're going to sit here with your arms folded and presenting that I'm having a look, it's not going to work for either of us. Beautiful, welcome. What's your name? I'm Chase. Chase? Yes, sir. Welcome. Yes, sir. Take a seat. Chase, how can I help? Um, yeah, I want to tap into my financial... Um, the blockage? Yes, sir. Great. Okay, so what we're going to do with Chase, very interesting thing is everything is energy, everything is consciousness. So what Chase thinks is in his head alone is actually being beamed out everywhere. So his ideas, his thoughts, his beliefs are an energy system. So the brain was designed to access frequencies of thought. We're good with that? Not just our own though, because we've already proven that, haven't we? You can feel when somebody's thinking about you, when they're about to call you. So you're able to perceive thought across the board. Not just your own, your brain perceives thought. It doesn't delineate, oh, that's his thought, so I can't hear it, well, no, no, no. You can feel when your partner's angry with you, can't you? <laughs> yes? It's not just your own thoughts you're picking up on, it's whatever you focus on. That's the key. So, Chase is here, and he wants that, me to have a look at what's holding him back financially. So if I'm his coach or his mentor, or whatever it is that I role I'm playing, I can go straight into his subconscious mind and have a look, okay? So I just got something in mind there. So we're going to Chase's subconscious mind there. You're open, you're okay? Mm -hmm. I have a peek around? You see? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you smell really good, by the way. <laughs> it's, <a beautiful> <laughs> it's the UI pheromones. <laughs> Appreciate that. That is, that is Australian uh, perfume, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's Australian blood. Is that what you mean? Yeah. The Aussiness. Your, it's not a perfume, but you call them uh, after cologne. After shame, yeah, it's okay. So where are we going to go? So, the, so 
I'm going in to chase the subconscious mind, and his subconscious mind, it talks to me the same way my thoughts talk to me. It comes in like a, it's a frequency. Your brain is a freak, you know, just takes it all in. And he's showing me pictures and feelings. The first feeling I got is he's showing me a whole family around him. This is it going to be a little bit confronting? Okay, you're cool. Mm -hmm. He's just showing for me to earn money, I've got to share it with everyone. That's what's in the background. Because it's, he's showing me the role of a male is to provide for the family. That's passed down, isn't it? Is that what men do? Yeah. That's what we do, that's what, that's what he's got. It's been shown to him. So he's showing to me, it's like, he's heads down and he's like, what's the point? I've got to give it to this guy and he's a, this person, and they don't get off their ass, and this person, they get off their ass, and I end up with nothing. So I'm just gonna join a lot of them. I just play small. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Yeah. If I was a coach and a counselor from the old paradigm, how long would have that taken me to get to that? <laughs> yes, yes. Never. If he didn't know it, how could I have ever gotten there? He didn't know that consciously. This is back here. I remember I had to, did a demo for a couple of doctors. And he said, all right, I'll test you out. People like to test me. <laughs> Not a party trick, what is this? <laughs> anyway, I indulged him and I rarely do it these days. This is when we first got here and he said, all right, I'm having this issue with my relationship. And I told him. And he said, what you told me in 30 seconds, we haven't even got near in three years of counselling with my therapist. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about everyone, about all you. You are all knowing. That is profound. We just met, and he just showed me exactly what's stopping him financially. Bang! You saw how quick that was. I didn't need to sit here in meditation, because I don't believe I have to. If you believe you have to sit in meditation to get these answers, that will be your experience. But we don't teach you that, so our mentors don't need to do it. So what we do here, back to Chase, let's not leave him stewing in that, in that puddle, the way to heal a non-truth is with a truth. truth. But if I don't access his truth, how can I know the truth? I can, you know, prophesize all these wonderful truths. Oh, just get past them and give them all this guy, you know, this absolute psycho babble. Or I can go back to the same place where I was and ask what his truth is. It's be much more effective, right? He doesn't need my opinion. He needs truth, his truth. So I'm gonna go back into that space. And we're just gonna go back, he's just gonna, I wanna go back to the first time where he felt that about money. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back there. You're all good, I've got this, you can relax. And he's showing me him as a baby on the ground. And he's just showing me this, this interaction between his parents and the end result I won't go into too much detail because what he's just showing me is his dad was angry that he had to provide for the whole family it's like his dad was resentful it's like what you've spent that money already oh, bang it's, it's just, that's how he's showing it to me so what I do in that position is I'm just going to go a bit deeper. I'm just going to ask, what is his truth as a baby in that moment? What truth did he need to know? And it's showing me, it comes up in layers. The first truth it's showing me is your father was resentful about a lot of things. That was just one thing. It actually even wasn't top of his list. He was resentful that he was sharing It was like the kids were an interruption to the family, to his wife, to his relationship. So he, he wasn't resentful about the money, he resent, was resentful about that there were other people in the family. So Chase is starting to feel all this energy and starting to take that on as his own truth. People cause resentment. Money and giving to people cause resentment. 
So let's fast track a little bit here. We go back a bit deeper and we go, what is the truth that he really needed to know in that moment? I'm being shown different levels. I just want to see if I can fast track it. No, I've got to go. See, I'm being shown what to do. I'm not using a textbook. I didn't go to psychology degree. He's showing me what he needs. How perfect is that, right? Step by step. He's saying, no, tell him this. Okay, I'll tell him this. So he's been told that his father didn't want to be there at all. You okay with that? Yeah. That's what he's being shown. Okay. So I'm going to go back and say, what else is the next thing that Chase needs to know? It wasn't because of Chase. You weren't the reason your father didn't want to be there. The reason your father didn't want to be there is because he was worried he was going to be a letdown to all you guys, the whole family. Like his father was a letdown to him. Passed down, boom, boom, boom. So his dad's just acting out the program from his father. It wasn't his truth that he's let down or his father's, but that's what gets passed down. So what Chase needs to know in this moment is that it had nothing to do with him as to why his father didn't want to be there. Let me just see where else we need to go on this one. That's all. That's all he needed to know as a little child. You're okay. So the next thing I go, I go into the next experience where we started to really firm up this belief system. It looks like a point in time where he was, yep, brothers? brothers? Mm -hmm. That's a funny comment to ask a African-American, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I, had, I had a couple of um, people, guests at our house that were you know, African-American and and I said, to, to, are you two brothers? They looked at me like, <laughs> I'm in by birth. Like, typical Australian to say something like that. Anyway, I'm seeing Chase's brother since like he's having to give money to his brother. I have to give money to my brother. And he's like, I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back. I swear I'll pay you back. No, doesn't pay him back. So his experience is, not only do I have to shell out money, I'm not respected in the process. Can you feel that? So we're going back, we're just going to look at the truth. What is the truth that Chase needs to know in that moment? So your money is your money. Can you feel that? Let's let that in. This little Chase, he's probably 12 years old, and he's being told in that moment, your money is your money. It's not to be given away. Yes, as a family, do not give your money away. Let them earn it. So I'm just going to go a bit deeper and see, is there another truth that Chase needs to know? You earned your money, so you deserve your money. It's to be spent on you. I can feel, as I'm saying that, his energy around here is starting to go, really? What? Slowly letting it in. So that non-truth, it's like it's starting to you know, dissolve. Okay, we're going to go deeper. I think we might get to the fourth experience with this one. Let's see if there's any more truth that Chase needs to know about that moment. No? It's like, you're giving me some swear words here. Yeah, him. It's like, no, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get your money. It's your money. Okay, next, next experience we're going to go to. Let's fast track some truths here. What is the next level of experience we need to go with Chase? a bit older, lost a little bit of money, I'm not entitled to having money. So you need to know is your money in your life is dependent upon self-love. The more you love yourself, the more money you have. Whenever you feel down, you make silly decisions with money. Yeah. So, I know it's true. <laughs> I speak truth. You're, to you're talking to me. So it's saying, for you to be a wealthy man, how old are you now? Saying by 30, it's showing me by 30s, saying, for you to be wealthy by your 30s, you need to cultivate self-love. How's that feel? That's good. That's good. So immediately, Chase now no longer feels hopeless that he's a victim to heritage, lineage, giving it away. 
he's gotten the truth that being wealthy is in his path. It's shown me very clearly. He's got people working for him. He's going to be wealthy by about 33. If one thing happens, he loves himself. When he doesn't love himself, money flitters away. When he loves himself, he brings it in and he does clever things with it. Now, that would very much apply to a lot of you as well. You'll feel that if it applies to you. But it's, it's coming from Chase. So I need to go to another level. Let's go to another level. Next truth, next experience of truth is family. Having a wife, having kids. It's kind of fast tracking me into that space. And the truth Chase needs to know is if they are of you, of your blood, your immediate blood, they are deserving of sharing in your fortune, in your wealth. If they've come from you, then the money is just an extension of that. Can you understand that? Yes, yep. Right. So now he knows the parameters. If they came from him, they can share in it. And he can feel great about that. The way he shared his blood with his children to come, he can share money to it. So we're just going to see, is there anything else Chase needs here? It's just saying this will change once he lets in self-love. That's the purpose. That's why he came up here, because he needs to let in self-love. So some of these situations, you'll get the answers, but there's going to be some instructions too. It's like life isn't just one possible outcome. There's multiple. If Chase allows in self-love, he's going to be a wealthy man. If he holds to that, he will be. If he lets in his family coming and nagging at him, I want this, I want this, not a wealthy man. So now he can see how important it is to prioritize self-love. I just want to check in with Chase. How are you feeling? I'm good. Feeling good? Well done. So, a very quick look at when we open ourselves up, when we're using our brain in a way that we're not used to using it. Because this is what UI is all about. You know how scientists are always saying, oh, we only use 5% of our brain? You won't hear enlightened people talk like that. Because enlightened people are using all their brain. It's the ones who are not using their brain like that. Talk about it. UI is opening up the full capacity of the brain. The more limiting beliefs, the more truths you let in, the bigger you see yourself, bigger you see yourself, the more of your brain you use. Letting more intelligence in. So in that example, I just use my brain in a very different way. I use it like a radio dial. I said, I don't want to tune into my radio station I want to tune into his because you are all little radio stations broadcasting, broadcasting, broadcasting. So that is what we do in the mentor training. We teach you how to open yourself up like a radio antenna in a very safe way. This is natural. This is very natural to you. This is innate. We teach you how to do that so that when you want to help someone, all the answers are there all the time. The same with Nazir. When Nazir came up on the TV show, and he said what his situation was, I didn't need to think about what is all the current medical ways forward or the psychological ways forward. How can I keep all that stuff in my head? That's r ridiculous. I just tapped straight into his body and his body just said, he's not impotent. He just doesn't want to sleep with his wife. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah, I said, your body wants you out of the relationship. And he's like, but that's not how it's done. Because from Iran, Iran yes. the men don't leave their wife. They don't do it. It's not the done thing. No. I'm still being punished. <laughs> the relatives are punishing relatives. him. He's My having hot... My don't talk to me. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> He's having dates left, right and centre and they're punishing him. Do you have a question? Yes. Hi. Uh, 